Looks like Andretti and Skinner are going to hook up on the outside. That's Andretti in the 43, Skinner in the 31, and drive to the front. An outside line has been hanging back for the last few laps, but now it begins to move as Andretti has assumed command of this race. And here comes Mike Skinner, who led earlier for five laps into second spot. They're going to drop Tony Stewart to at least third or fourth, maybe even fifth as they cross the line. Looks like Tony Stewart all of a sudden is not able to run his car wide open around the racetrack the way he did earlier. Looks like the 20 car, Stewart, might need a little bit of adjustment on his car once these cars start making pit stops, which won't be too long. Look at Michael Walker on the outside, and Stewart and Skinner almost get it together. Oh, they're in the grass. Oh, and here goes Skinner crossing front of all these cars. Skinner and he stuck. It rained heavily last night. And look at the damage on Jeff Gordon's DuPont Chevrolet. And Rusty Wallace, his car also heavily damaged and stopped in turn three. There you can see how Mike Skinner is not able to get away from his spot out there in turn three. Jeff Gordon able to get that car started and rolling again as the field comes by. They're barely able to move the car so heavily damaged. Chad Little remains immobile. As does Rusty Wallace. I see Rusty moving around. I would guess that the damage to the nose of this car, Rusty's car, he hit, it looks like he might have hit Jeff Gordon in the right side. And Brad Bodine is also involved in the crash. He climbs out uninjured, but a very badly damaged race car. And Ernie Irvin is also assisted from his Eminem's car. That's the worst spot you can hit this car. You can hit these cars. We see him trying to get back to pit road. Gordon has had finishes of 39th and 43rd already this year. 39th coming at Rockingham and finished 43rd last at Texas. And it's going to be another disappointing finish for Jeff Gordon, the defending series champion. Let's take a look at what happened again. Here they are moving off of corner number two. Watch the right of your screen. Mike Skinner and Tony Stewart right in here are going to make contact. And somehow they get in the grass. And Skinner turns right across the racetrack. There we see Jeff Gordon coming directly into him. All of a sudden, Gordon loses control, goes up, pam, hits the wall. And Rusty Wallace and also Ernie Irvin drive in the right side of Jeff Gordon's car. There's the Pennzoil cop again. There you see the, the, I think, a little bit of contact between Stewart and Skinner, not allowing Skinner to get back on the racetrack and get on the dirt. And, and look at Jeff Burton, the points leader. How close did he come to Skinner as he went by? There is Chad Little sliding to the inside. Brett Bodine being involved in the crash. Running into Rusty Wallace down there. There he goes in the inside wall. And now from Rusty Wallace's on-board camera. That's what it's like to crash at 190 miles an hour. Now this is Mike Skinner. He knows he's in trouble when you get on the grass. He comes up the racetrack, and that causes everybody else to hit the brakes, lose control, and causes a multi-car crash here at Talladega. Back to Talladega in just a moment. Stay with us. Now you know why you put think and patience on the dashboard, don't you? Yep. Who is it, Robin? Okay, here's the two guys in question, Mike Skinner and Tony Stewart. You know, 
Blocking is a way of life in NASCAR Winds Cup racing, particularly at the big racetracks. And you see Skinner trying to block Tony Stewart, and they make contact. You know, maybe Stewart should not have been so aggressive. But also, Skinner, you know, why block this early in the race? They haven't even made a pit stop yet. Well, this is what happened. wide open. I mean, he basically never got to back off the gas. Watch Sterling Marlin. See what happens to him as he goes through the crash. Now, he's already backed off. His spotter is really on the ball. He has already backed off. Car's on the outside crashing. Car's on the inside. And all of a sudden, Sterling said, where'd the racetrack go? Let me go up here. Let's see. Feeling my way. Ha! Made it true. Wasn't that a great job? <laughs> Look at this. They're going to beat him up. <laughs> What's he doing? He got up there and climbed on the car. Climbed on. Let's see. He's part of the record service. Let's see. Play. Watch this guy. Climbs up on oh. the car. And Larry oh, said, Get just... off my car, man. We're going to put this car back on the racetrack. Get off the nose of that car. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. The guy was trying to get up there to help raise the hood so they could. Yeah, unbuckle it, I guess. Yeah, he was trying to get up there and help him unbuckle it, but. <laughs> He thought the car was wrecked. He didn't realize there was any. Now, emotions run very high, not only on the racetrack, but also back in the garage area. Now, when they move Mike Skinner's car back into the garage area, watch what happens as the uh, workers free the car. He's going to get up and try. See, they were trying to get the hood to the air, the air not to blow the hood back so they had some bungee cords on it he was up there just to take the bungee cords off and he but he stood up on the on the nose of the race car and Larry McGrindle said man get off my car right now down to Bill Weber and they continue to work on the low Chevrolet the suspension is good they believe the transmission is good they want to replace the nose piece they're going to spot weld that Mike Skinner you've had great success here but not today walk us through what happened back there well, it was just a racing deal, you know. Uh, I guess Tony Stewart had a little run on us there and maybe got a little bit anxious and got into the back of our Lowe's Chevrolet, and we went for a hell of a ride back there. But, uh, you know, we're going to get this Lowe's Chevy back out, do the best we can. I know he never would do that on purpose, so, uh, you know, it's just one of those racing deals. What can we say? We'll uh, get back out there and get all the Winston Cup points we can and get Lowe's a little more recognition. Those normally don't happen early in the race, Mike. Well... I see a guy named Mike Skinner do stupid, stupid stuff like that his rookie year, so I can't say nothing. This team is racing for the championship. They will try and get back out on the track and get some points.
And the 31 car repairs have been made apparently, and he is reporting to or hopes to uh, report to the race before too long, but they need a little bit more duct tape on that car. Mike Skinner is back on the racetrack. They repaired the car, and before he could go back out, he reported to his pit area and sat there with the NASCAR officials until NASCAR finally released him to go on the track. He was held for two laps after he came back out onto his pit stop. With crew chief Larry McReynolds, before this race started, we talked about how there's a lot of emotion on pit road as well as on the racetrack. Larry, walk us through what happened when your car came down on the tow truck. Well, <laughs> you know, we, we was tore up, but uh, record drivers, I know they're here doing a job, but uh, that gun, they did more, a lot more damage than Tony Stewart and the racetrack did to it. There's just no sense in that, you know. I know they're here doing a job. We got a job to do, but... They're the ones we're so many laps down. I know we provoked it in the beginning by being in the wreck, but they tore a lot more up. But uh, that's just part of it. You know, I just, I hate it. I thought we had a car good enough to win this race. Uh, I'm not very happy with Mike Skinner right now about what happened over there. It was awful early in the race with that. I hope the Gibbs Bunch is not very happy with Tony Stewart because a lot of good race cars got taken out, especially this 30 one team, but uh, we we'll just keep digging. We're going to get us a win with this low star. There's, there's just no way around it. When you say you're not happy with Mike, can you explain that, Larry? Well, I just think it was awful early in the race for, for what was going on over there on the backstretch to be going on. And again, I'm not blaming anybody. I'll walk off the side of a mountain for, for the driver I work for, but I'll also put him in his place when he's wrong. And he's like the kid that's in trouble. He better hope this race lasts a long time because I'm going to get him when it's over with. <laughs> Take him out behind the barn, huh? <laughs> Got Tony Stewart, but I've also got a guy here talking to Tony, Mike Skinner, and both these guys had great race cars today. Unfortunately, an incident early on. Guys, what happened over on the back stretch, Mike? Well, you know, as they said Tony's got to run on you, and, and uh, I was guarding the bottom, and I just kept coming down, coming down, and coming down, and, and I, I, I didn't think he was far enough along there, and just, you know, it's hard to see out that side of the car, and we just barely touched and at that point you know it's 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 pretty hard you know it's it's pretty hard to save a race car right there and it's probably as much my fault uh, as it is anybody's because uh, it's awful early in the race and trying to guard that top spot right there was kind of stupid you know i'd rather went back to 20th and come back so we had a good race car but uh, like i told everybody from the jump street you know tony's a good race driver and you know <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe he should have backed out. Maybe I should have realized it. Maybe I shouldn't have kept coming down. You know, I, I, I'm not mad at nobody, and I don't really blame myself, and I don't really blame Tony. It was a racing deal. Tony? Well, I think we're, I think we're probably going to team up, and we're going to open up our own lawn cutting service because we, we mowed a lot of Talladega grass today. But uh, yeah, it's like he said, I mean, uh, I probably should have backed down. And I was afraid that if I backed down, there was a whole line of, of cars that gave me a push right there that were going to go by both of us. But, uh, you know, the only way to get the experience is to, to go out here and do what we're doing. And, uh, you know, that's part of being a rookie. I'm going to make mistakes too. And uh, But, I mean, don't let this guy fool you. I mean, he's been one of the guys that when I've – been down and, and, and struggling at places he's been one of the first guys that's come over to help me so uh, you know, that's that's why we're able to stand here and, and smile at each other as the folks at home right now watch that incident uh, again coming off turn two at 200 at almost 200 miles per hour you really don't have a lot of time to react no you don't and uh, you know as close as we run here i mean it, it doesn't take much of a bobble to to cause something big to happen and uh, you know, it's like we said, I mean, I pulled down to go with him, but then I got such a good run that, that I would thought, well, if I slow down, the whole line's going to go by, and if I if I pull down, then I might be able to just go on by and, and at least keep the whole freight train from going by. But, uh, you know, those are just experiences you have to learn with trial and error, and, and you just hope when you when you try those things that, that nothing uh, happens like what happened today to us. And, Mike, you come over and give him a great big hug before we come back where we're in commercial a moment ago and say, hey, I was a rookie a couple of years ago. I understand sometimes these things happen. <laughs> yeah, they really do, and, you know, it's easy to sit here right now and me as being here for a couple of years and say, you knew better than to keep going down there. And it's easy to say he knows better than to stay in that gas. We both made a little bit of a mistake there. And it's just one of those situations. And they asked me if I was mad at Tony Stewart. And I said, I remember a guy named Mike Skinner made a lot of mistakes his rookie year. That's the worst one Tony makes. He's going to do good. Hey, we're hurt Larry McReynolds is a little miffed. Are you hiding from Larry? <laughs> no, nah, if he's mad at me, he'll get over it. He just, <laughs> you know, uh, Larry and I got a great relationship. But uh, 
I got to go get my uh, rear end chewed out right now, matter of fact. So thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, Mike Skinner leaves Tony Stewart his best career Winston Cup finish fifth at Talladega today.